Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Fully Automated RNA Library Preparation for Sequencing Respiratory Viruses. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Beckman Coulter Life Sciences. To learn more, visit Beckman.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speakers. Dr. Tomas Zamashtel, head of the Genomics Core Unit at the Berlin Institute of Health at Charité, and Randy Pears, Senior Application Scientist and a member of the Automated Genomics Business Unit with Beckman Coulter Life Sciences. Tomas and Randy, you may now begin your presentation. Good day, everybody. Uh, it is my pleasure to have this opportunity to present jointly with a colleague from Beckman Coulter, Randy Paris, an automated workflow for sequencing respiratory RNA viruses. Even though the focus of this presentation is on sequencing the genome of SARS-CoV-2 respiratory virus, our workflow is obviously capable of resolving whole genome sequences of full spectrum of uh, RNA viruses. Before I begin, uh, I'd like to tell you a few words on the institution that I'm affiliated with. Um, Berlin Institute of Health, or in short, BIH, is a part of the Charité University Hospital Berlin. Charité is one of the largest university hospitals in Europe. It spans over four campuses. It accommodates more than 100 departments and institutes. It has more than 13,000 staff employees. Its annual turnover exceeds 1.3 billion euros. The Berlin Institute of Health constitutes, next to the university hospital and the faculty, the third pillar of the BIH. The Berlin Institute of Health executes a range of research programs implementing translational activities in the setting of the Charité University Hospital. Um, BIH clearly benefits from a strong partnership with a top-ranked institution in biomedical research, Max Delbruck Center. In that respect, the BIH Genomics Unit that I'm representing today profits from both environments. The focus of the BIH Genomics Unit is on providing genomic tools and implementing them as a part of clinical workflow to enable patient care. The unit consists of two technology platforms. The first one centering on single cell technologies and the other one utilizing standard bulk NGS approaches. The fact that my unit members include both molecular biologists and bioinformaticians allows us to implement workflows starting from clinical sample and ending on clinical grade reporting. Why would we want to sequence viral genomes? One of the things that we learned from the current pandemic situation is that whole genome sequencing of viral genomes may help us to better identify outbreaks and track transmissions. The latter is oftentimes not possible when sequencing small genomic fragments. Application of whole genome sequencing improves the viral phylogenetic analysis by providing a wealth of variant sites this, in turn, enables studying viral genetic association with disease, including genotype, phenotype uh, association studies. In the clinical context, it is of great interest to implement workflows that include all steps 
from sample to medical grade report. These workflows need to undergo a thorough validation in order to ensure meeting defined standards. Yet, due to the fact that molecular assays, such as NGS-based assays, are in continuous development, a significant effort needs to go into validation of clinical workflows that are utilizing them. So in the realm of bioinformatics data analysis and also data management, a considerable level of standardization has been already achieved. Uh, for example, by introduction of data formats and implementation of tools for primary data analysis. The tools for clinical data interpretation and reporting are still largely at their infancy. However, it has to be said that in the last few years, a considerable effort went into their conceptualization and development. A way towards standardization of workflows utilizing molecular assays is their automation using liquid handling stations. Automation not only enables greater reprodu reproducibility, eliminating human errors and improving process control, but also enables higher sample throughput. So now, depending on the application, two approaches uh, that enable identification of viral genome sequences could be implemented. In the first scenario, where the aim would be to identify new sequences of viruses that, for example, cause disease, the so-called metagenome approach uh, could be utilized. And sequences of all species present in analyzed samples uh, would be sequenced. However, in scenarios where when the genomic sequence of the virus of interest is already known, a targeted sequencing of viral genome can be implemented. Clearly, as opposed to metagenome approach, targeted sequencing is a less data-intense approach. So generally speaking, PCR-based or Amplicon-based target approach requires rather low sample inputs, and it's usually associated with uh, lower costs. Compared to it, enrichment through hybrid capture allows for dramatically larger probe panels with more comprehensive profiling of the target regions. The oligo probes used for hybrid capture-based target enrichment remain effective even with within highly mutagenic regions, uh, allowing targeting of rapidly evolving RNA viruses. Additionally, this method allows for near complete sequence data uh, of targeted regions and enables applications such as variant analysis for viral evolution uh, or viral um, surveillance. In our effort to contribute a possibly high number of fully resolved genomes of SARS-CoV-2 to this a database, we have implemented a comprehensive workflow that integrates automated library preparation and target enrichment utilizing the um, Biomec i7 hybrid workstation from Beckman Coulter, sequencing on NextSeq 500 instrument from Illumina, and we utilized our custom data analysis workflow that utilizes the pipeline developed by the uh, Robert Koch Institute in Berlin. We have chosen to implement Illumina's RNA prep with enrichment in order to enrich viral fragments or targets from total nucleic acid. More specifically, reverse transcription of extracted RNA and library preparation was followed by enrichment with the Illumina respiratory virus oligo panel. The res respiratory virus oligo panel contains sequences of about 40 common respiratory viruses, uh, including coronavirus strains and, in particular, the sequence of SARS-CoV-2 virus. 
To increase the library complexity, uh, human control genes are also included in, in the panel. While validating our clinical workflow, we simultaneously produced libraries for 48 samples on the Biomec i7 hybrid workstation that were then sequenced using per N75 base pair mid output kit on the Nexec 500 sequencer. Now I would like to give a floor to the automation specialist from Beckman Coulter, Randy Perez who will walk you through the process of implementing the Illuminas protocol on the Biomec i7. Thanks, Tomas. Uh, thank everybody for joining today. Uh, my name is Randy Pears, and I'm a senior application scientist with Beckman Culture Life Sciences. The Illumina RNA prep with enrichment application uh, is a demonstrated method for the Beckman Culture Biomec i7 uh, hybrid liquid handling platform. Shown here is the deck layout for the Biomech i7 NGS workstation, which is equipped with 26 automated lab work positions, seven tip loading positions, an active wash station, orbital shaker, uh, both static and shaking and eco peltiers for active uh, plate heating and cooling, and an integrated applied biosystems automated thermocycler. Also shown here, uh, the bullet points show some high-level highlights of the method, which I will discuss in further detail. The method itself is divided into two separate workflows, uh, cDNA synthesis and library prep on the top, and then hybridization and capture enrichment on the bottom. The method is written to allow users to select their given start and stop points. Uh, and these start and stop points coincide with Illumina's published safe stop points um, and are represented by a yellow clock on the bottom right hand corner. At the start of each workflow, a guided labware setup will assist users uh, with a graphical interface to show them how to set up the run. Uh, this interface will specify number of tip boxes needed, required labware, minimum reagent fill volumes, and this is a dynamic interface that will change depending on the, the user-defined run parameters. The method is scalable. Uh, it's capable of running up to 96 samples for library preparation and either up to 96 singleplex libraries or up to 32 threeplex pools uh, for hybridization and enrichment. Uh, users may also vary the amount of input material from 10 to 100 nanograms of input RNA and can run both high quality and degraded or FFBE samples. Uh, the method was written to reduce the total number of user touch points and can be run in as few as two manual user interventions, one at the start of cDNA synthesis and one at the start of hybridization and enrichment. Shown to the right, our timing estimates for each individual process. The entire workflow for 96 samples pooled down to 32 threeplex pools can be performed in approximately 12 hours. The Illumina RNA prep with enrichment demonstrated method is designed to run with Biomech Method Launcher. Biomec Method Launcher is a user interface that allows users to run Biomec methods outside of the Biomec 5 method editor software. This protects against unintended or, un or accidental changes by multiple users while preparing to run methods. Run parameters are defined using the methods option selector. Uh, this forms a dynamic HTML driven user interface. Uh, that allows users to select the parameters they wish to run during the current method run, such as number of samples, the use of the automated thermocycler, uh, which indexes to be used during the course of the run, and method start and save stop points. Method parameters chosen here uh, that would create an error state in the method, uh, such as skipping a step in the workflow will display an error at the bottom of this interface and will not allow a user to proceed until those errors are addressed.
After the user has selected their run parameters, the guided labware setup will provide a graphical interface to assist the user with deck setup, including the required number of tips, consumables, and calculated required reagents. This setup is dynamic and will change according to the user input parameters so that unnecessary reagents or labware will not be shown throughout the course of this run. I will now pass the mic back to Tomas to discuss his work utilizing the Illumina RNA prep with enrichment kit on the Biomech i7 hybrid in his lab. Thank you, Randy. In order to validate our automated workflow for SARS-CoV-2 genome sequencing, we've utilized the synthetic SARS-CoV-2 RNA controls from uh, Twist Biosciences. At the input of 10 nanogram and as little as 10 to the power of three of viral sequence copies, we could still cover more than 94% of the coronavirus genome with the coverage of at least five reads. A recent publication in the Lancet Journal reported standard curves from papers providing serial dilution factors and corresponding CT values in patient samples. From this picture, it can be learned that the sequence by us with SARS-CoV-2 controls containing 10 to the power of three copies would technically correspond to a CT value of 30 in patient samples. And this is highlighted with the broken blue line. In the next step, we validated our automated clinical workflow for SARS-CoV-2 genome sequencing utilizing patient samples from the Department of Virology at the University Hospital Charité. So for the two batches of 48 samples, we took Eight, eight, eight and a half microliter as input and utilize whenever possible 20 nanogram of nucleic acid. For roughly 25% of samples where qubit quantification implied values below two and a half nanogram, we just use eight and a half microliter of input. Now, the insert sizes of the sequence two batches of 48 clinical samples had mid sizes in the range between 200 and 250 base pair, showing little variation. We have obtained an excellent coverage of the target region, so even at the coverage of 50 deduplicated reads, more than 98% of SARS-CoV-2 genome was covered. So importantly, we observed little in and between the batch variation, as it can, can be now seen in this uh, bar plot. The CT values from RT-PCR of the analyzed 96 patient samples were in the range from 19 to 31. When CT values of clinical samples are plotted against the number of reads that map to SARS-CoV-2 genome, a clear coloration can be observed. It doesn't really come as a surprise that sequencing of samples with high CT values results in lower numbers of reads mapped to SARS-CoV-2 genome. Similarly, a strong correlation can be observed when CT values of clinical samples are plotted against the percentage of reads that uniquely map to the SARS-CoV-2 genome. At the high CT values of 30, corresponding to very low viral copies, the percentage of reads that can be attributed to SARS-CoV-2 genome ranges from 20% to 70%, implicating presence of contaminating sequences in the sequence libraries. So in order to facilitate alignments, Q 
QC analysis and tertiary analysis of generated data, we have implemented our own bioinformatics workflow. We have utilized the already developed bioinformatics workflow, COFPI, developed by the Robert Koch Institute in Berlin and added additional functionality in order to enable analysis of sequences enriched with, uh, with the Illumina respiratory panel. We named our solution RESP VR Pipe, and it can be freely downloaded from the GitLab at the specified HTTP address. In the following chart, you can see the data flow implemented by us as an extension to the analysis workflow of the COFPIPE. On the left, in the bright yellow, you can see that we added the whole set of the pathogens from the Illumina respiratory panel to the taxonomic reference database. The reference sequences were taken from NCBI according to the RefSec identifiers as provided by Illumina. The main focus of the pipeline is on COVID-19, but if any other pathogen included in the respiratory panel is detected, as presented at the bottom of the chart, um, it will be quantitatively evaluated, as highlighted uh, at the bottom in blue, and, the, and also highlighted in the uh, final report, which you can see in yellow on the right. Additionally, we give instructions on how to evaluate unmapped reads due to possible additional contaminating pathogens like bacteria. This part of the workflow is highlighted in gray at the bottom of the chart. The primary use of the developed pipeline is to characterize sequences that are enriched with the specific NGS panel. However, like I already mentioned in the previous slide, the application of our pipeline allows for annotation of contaminating sequences. In the highlighted sample on the right, 26% uh, of all reads could be attributed to SARS-CoV-2 genome. Twelve percent of reads could be identified as of human origin. And as much as 60%, 62% of reads could not be classified. If only human and virus sequences that are part of the Illumina respiratory disease panel were used. Application of our RESP VR pipeline resulted in classification of almost all of the unclassified sequences into bacterial strains, strongly suggesting as a source bacterial species present in throats of analyzed patients. So in this summary, I presented to you an automated clinical workflow for whole genome sequencing of viruses that can be characterized by high sensitivity of utilized Illumina RNA prep with enrichment assay, we could document high levels of data reproducibility when the assay was executed on the Biomec i7 hybrid workstation from Beckman Coulter. Last but not least, I presented to you a freely available software solution developed by us that facilitates the analysis of data generated with the respiratory virus oligopanel from Illumina. I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, bioinformatician Martin Jäger and technician Cornelia Schle for their excellent contributions. Um, big thanks also to Victor Korman from the Department of Virology for clinical samples. And last but not least, big thanks to colleagues from Illumina and Beckman Coulter, Ryan, jo Jonathan, Randy, Martin, and Jan for a great collaboration. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be most happy to take some questions now. Thank you.
you, Tomas and Randy, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is, is the automated method available? Uh, thanks, Michelle. Uh, yes, uh, the automated method is available and has been demonstrated um, in Illumina Qualified. Uh, also, we have an application note available as well. Um, if you'd like more information on that, uh, please reach out to your local Beckman Culture sales rep um, or your local uh, application specialist. Thank you. Next question. What things did you consider when selecting an automated workstation? Um, Sorry, I lost my window there for a second. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I think Tomas and I probably both have some some thoughts on that, um, you know, from uh, from from that my my perspective, um, I think one of the big drivers is going to be um, your throughput. Um, you know, how many samples you're looking to get through in a day, um, costs per samples. Um, you know, if, if you're talking about doing a lot of high throughput stuff, um, we're we're talking. Uh, uh, you know, but eventually the, the amount of time and cost concerns can definitely make automation a, a better candidate for this. Um, and then I would say the other thing, too, is like your scalability. What do you expect your throughput is going to be in the future? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I think, Tomas, you might have a couple of other suggestions. I, I, are you, are you yeah, online now? Sure. There we go. So, uh, so, um, so first of all, the size of the user base, and especially with regards to users from academic community, and then of course the uh, the number of already implemented NGS protocols, and what is really important in terms of um, on-site essay development, uh, in terms of automation, is of course the availability of local uh, service support. Great, thank you. Next question. Can you tell us about your RNA extraction workflow prior to library prep? Sure, so, so in a nutshell, the extraction workflow uh, is um, based on the Roche's Magna Pure 96 instrument. And the, this very essay yields both DNA and RNA. So this is what we use as, as, a, uh, as an input for this essay, actually a mixture of both species. Thank you. Next question. What approaches can we take to minimize the occurrence of contaminating sequences in the sequencing data? Okay, so I'll take this one as well. So um, in our case, the contaminating sequences are actually present by nature as they are derived from nasal and throat respiratory areas of patients. So actually it's a feature of these samples. Okay, next question. What database did you use when annotating contaminating sequences? Okay, so uh, we utilized the NCBI database and, and the classification as it was implemented by a Kraken tool that is actually utilizing exact alignments of uh, KMAX. Thank you. It looks like we have time for one more question. There are many bacterial sequences in the data. Do they correspond to any bacterial infections associated with COVID infections? Right, so um, some patients would be co-infected by pathogenic bacterial strains and including um, Streptococcus pneumoniae or similar. And that is likely, of course, to negatively impact on patients' uh, prognosis. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tomas and Randy. Do you have any final comments for our audience? Um, well, I, I, would, I would have uh, a, a sort of in the line of advertisement. So it's really fun to work with uh, Beckman Kulka, and I, I do appreciate this. Great. Well, thank you again, Tomas and Randy, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Beckman Coulter Life Sciences, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions we did not have time for today, and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.